Hello Facebook, Chef Ben here. It is Wednesday night, it's 9 o'clock, it's Chit Chat Chop. My guest tonight is Valerie Mansour. She is an author, editor, and food critic, and she has authored? Edited. Edited this beautiful book called Nova Scotia Cookery Then and Now. Um, I was lucky enough to be part of this project as were 24 other chefs uh, from around the province. It's really cool. Uh, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna make one of the recipes that I did in the book. It's originally from 1921. So Valerie, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. I hope I didn't overdress with my best <laughs> apron. I think that you look fantastic. Thank you, thank we'll, you. We'll get back to the book. So first of all, how did you get involved in this project? I was asked to join the project by Nimbus Publishing. Okay. The project is, um, the concept came from the Nova Scotia Archives because they have this collection called What's Cooking? And it goes back as far as the 1700s, a collection of old recipes they from cookbooks. Like and they digitized yeah. thousands of recipes. So the idea was to select a bunch of recipes. We ended up with 83. And Taste of Nova Scotia matched the recipes with chefs, such as yourself, mm -hmm. and did the chefs did modern interpretations of the old recipes. And then so you kind of put it all together. My job was to edit the recipes, make sure they all made sense and there were ingredients missing or whatever. Um, Which must I have been a pretty intense task considering like all the different people that were involved in this, right? Like there must have been a lot of There was a lot of back and, and forth yeah. going on with the various chefs. I definitely um, got a few phone calls. You got a few what, phone is, calls. what is this? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How can you, you know, have this egg and the method and the eggs out of the list of ingredients or yeah, whatever, exactly. right? And cookbooks are tricky to edit because it's detail, detail, yeah. lots of numbers. So um, yeah, there, it was a lot of work in terms of the actual editing. Um, I also talked to every chef and had um, put a quote in the book that connects the old recipe with the new recipe. And I wrote the introduction and just um, pulled all the pieces together. And it's really cool too, in the book you have the new recipe with the old recipe as well, which is really neat to see that contrast. Um, what's the oldest recipe in the book, do you know? The first recipe we have, we did the book chronologically, which sort of made sense. The first recipe is the potato pudding from 1786. Wow. And it was reinterpreted as a potato creme brulee. Do you want to show the camera there? So this is 1726, you said? 17. I need my glasses. I think it's 86. I should remember all this <laughs> stuff. I used to dream about these things. <laughs> when did you or finish have, it? Or have nightmares. When I finished it? Oh, I don't know. A little while ago, a couple months ago, I guess, we were finished. And so 1786. 1786. Yeah. Irish potato pudding. Beautiful. And um, Andrew Prince did an interpretation, and it's called the Potato Creme Brulee, and there's the photo. Beautiful. And so this book actually comes out tomorrow, the official release. The official release is tomorrow, ooh, ooh. not all the... Oh, oh, oh. Woohoo! Everybody's <laughs> excited here. This goes for the live studio audience. <laughs> not all the copies have arrived in town yet, so but there are, um, there are some copies available to uh, buy at the launch tomorrow, and then um, after next week, they'll be everywhere. Awesome. And the launch is at the Archives? Archives of Nova Scotia. What yes. time? 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Cool. So Renee Downs, someone over Renee for a couple weeks. Hi, Renee. Then this is how it'll be. They'll just be like, oh, this person's here, and you'll say hi. Hi, Renee. <laughs> All right, so let's, let's do the other portion of the show, which is cooking, yeah. and we'll chat some more. So we're going to make the smoked salmon croquettes, which was one of my recipes. I'm going to show them your you work. Know. So this recipe that I got, it was an award-winning recipe from 1921. It was handwritten, it was very hard to read, a little bit of it, um, and I just didn't want to screw it up, right? Like that was my big thing, is it's a good recipe, I don't want to screw it up. You felt a lot of pressure. I did, so I just kind of made it a little lighter. You did a good job, I ma I've made these myself and they're delicious. Makes me so happy to hear that. <laughs> and the photograph is gorgeous. And who was the photographer? Len Wag, who works Len Wag. in the province. And the, um, he really did an exceptional job. Yeah, and Jessica Eamon was his food stylist, his stylist and yeah. she did a wonderful job as well. And so we went to places all over the, probably historical places all over the province, and put the food in kind of historical context yes. for the pictures, which was a really yeah. neat experience as well. Yeah, that was Len's idea to shoot the modern dishes in historic settings. So yeah. Prescott House, Uniac House, all the different Yeah, museums. I went to Uniac, it was oh, beautiful okay. down there. All right, so we're gonna make this. 
Uh, we have to start with the eggs. So do you want to separate an egg for me? Uh oh. Oh, you don't have to. I'm I can nervous. Do I've never done a, an egg on camera. Okay, so I'll tell you a trick. Just break the egg right into the bowl and then just scoop the yolk out. Wow. Yeah, it'll work really what well. What if I don't do it well? It's okay. just live. It's okay. It's just live on the internet. No big deal. <laughs> See, no, I blew oh, it. she broke it. I blew it. it. You okay. made me so no, nervous. No big deal. No big deal. <laughs> you made me so nervous. Has me nervous. I know how to separate an egg. I'll, I'll do that for a minute. It's okay. <laughs> I blew my reputation. I edited the book. I didn't write the rest of it. Cookbook <laughs> author Valerie Mansour. <laughs> you can't separate an egg. So, I, I can do it. I should have done it my way. I tried to do it your way. So just do that and then just scoop the yolk right out. Well, that's not how I do it. My mama didn't teach me to do it like that. I'll tell you what, I'll throw this one away. We can do it your way, okay? Hold on. How many eggs will we go through Doesn't tonight? Matter. We got tons of eggs. Let's have a contest. We have time. People can come I'm gonna in save, and guess. I'm going to save this yolk All just right. in case. All right, here is the way I would do this. I would flip it back and forth and let the white run out and the yolk stays in the shell. See, this is what happens when chefs try and get involved and make things too fancy. There you go. See? Perfect. Perfect. I did it. Yay. Yay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You just throw the bowl over there. If you want to wash your hands, just throw it right behind Doug. Right behind Doug. Uh-oh, you may have to explain who Doug is now. So Doug has come to film another side of things. You are Valerie's partner? Yes. Yeah. My partner um, crime. So what, actually, Doug is filming. You can't see him. But what are you filming for? Where is this going? Uh, this is just a little prologue on Facebook. Gotcha. So it's just for fun. Just for gotcha. Fun. And uh, just go on tomorrow morning. It'll be on tomorrow morning. Perfect. Awesome. All Love right. It. So uh, we have to whip these. The recipe in the book is to use a, a mixer, but yes. we're going to do it by hand because we've got big, strong arms. Right. Do you want me to do this or do you want to whisk it? You want to whisk it? Oh, Perfect. whisk it. So you do that, and I'll actually whisk don't this. Whisk it the proper way. Uh, How does a chef whisk it? Quickly. <laughs> no, it's just um, yeah, you're doing it right. The old when you're whipping an egg white or anything like that, the whole point is just to keep the whole thing moving and get as much air as possible. Mm -hmm. So if you put your bowl down, you'll have more control over it, and then you just move the egg as much. So just like kind of, or a figure eight works really well as well. Right. So I have an egg yolk in here. To this, I'm just going to add a pinch of pepper, a pinch of salt, a pinch of smoked paprika. I love smoked paprika. Pinch of cayenne. Me too. So you you used to be food critic for the Metro and the Daily News. And the Daily News. What was that like? That was fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got a free meal once a week. <laughs> <laughs> that does sound like fun. And my friends were just, you know, lining up to go with me, so it was very popular. And I'd go to a restaurant, and they wouldn't know I was coming. And so you kind of like hid your, you didn't like put pictures of yourself out or anything. No, I had a picture in the uh, newspaper behind the menu. <laughs> I came out. People who knew me said they could tell it was me, but I don't think. People usually knew it was me. There were a few restaurants where I knew the owner, so not much you can do about that. Yeah. Halifax is a small town. Um, so basically, yeah, I would go in and eat as much as I could. <laughs> <laughs> that was hard work. And I try not to take notes conspicuously. Often I'd go to the bathroom with my notebook, jot a few things down, and I'd try to write it really quickly when mm -hmm. I got home so everything was fresh. And then the Daily News would call the restaurant and say, our reviewer's been in, can we come by and take a photograph? Okay. And then they go, what? Why was she there? And then the nasty letters would come in. No. <laughs> <laughs> Only one nasty letter, but it was the best nasty letter you could imagine. Where this woman wrote to me and said, you wouldn't know a fresh bowl of fish chowder if it dumped up and bit you on the nose. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Ouch. Wow. So I'm assuming you didn't like her chowder very much. <laughs> I didn't like her chowder. I don't think you were known, I've heard someone who served you in restaurants, you were known as someone that tried to go out to get people. I think you were pretty honest, right? You were very honest with what's like very... I tried to be honest. I had a friend at the Y who happens to be a judge, and he told me I wasn't nasty enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my point. You're not known as someone who goes out to get anyone. That's, that's my point. <laughs> 
And then when I worked for Metro after the Dear Daily News died, I did a lunch rush column. And um, how am I doing here? Is this up to snuff? You're doing well. It yeah. just needs more. Do you want me to what? take over? I go to the gym, you know. Look at that. Oh, it's just killing together. Not bad, eh? Here, you could do the okay. finishing touch. Okay, so talk about your lunch column. What was that? Um, it was 150 a, words? 150 words. So I came, I ate, I left. So it was quite funny. I had a friend visiting one day who, who was a writer. And I said, hey, Jamie, do you want to read my column before I send it off? And he read it. And he said, get rid of that and, put in a, a comma, and advise you an adjective. I thought, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of friend you need. <laughs> That's very specific. So it was very um, short, but it was fun. Did you find the the constraints of like the shorter column kind of forced you to be a little more creative with your use of language? You didn't waste the word. Yeah. You would never say very, because very is a waste of word. Um, it was sort of fun from a writer's point of view, and I, I edit as well, so it was good, a good editing practice. I would imagine, yeah. You have and to be very careful what you say. Yeah, you, you just you really had to sum it up very quickly, but there wasn't there was no space to describe the ambiance or with the daily news. I, I forget how many words I had, three fifty maybe, and I could always tell a story about yeah. maybe something funny the server said or conversation at the next table I eavesdropped on or whatever. I could I could work that into my, my review, but I couldn't do that. At you Metro. couldn't really fit any context into the no, shorter. Yeah. No, so it was really short. So. Uh, so these guys, we just went to Stiff Peaks. That's all. We did. Um, it was a team effort. It was a team effort. I just I finished it. No, there was it was ninety percent done when I came in. Okay, so we got a we have this beautiful smoked salmon, cold smoked salmon, um, and we're just gonna chop it up. If you do this in your mixer or in a food processor, you don't really need to chop it because it'll kind of beat it apart. So we're just gonna put this on the board. And we're gonna chop it up. I'm going to learn how to chop like a chef. Oh, okay, Ooh. perfect. So I'll ask you to come Exciting. on this side of me then. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have a very well stocked first aid kit. Oh, should it be the <laughs> so I guess, how do you hold a knife? Probably the wrong way. I hold the knife like that. So it's pretty close. The only thing I would say is hold it a little bit higher. Hold it All on the right. blade and then wrap oh. your hand around. And that gives you more control. The blade won't slide around on you. Then hold your fingers flat. And then just kind of run the knife. Never lift the knife off the board. Just always keep in contact. And we'll just make nice, even oh, slices. Nice. He's good. He's got some skill. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your favorite part about this experience with this book? My favorite part was talking to the chefs. Yeah? Yes, because they're such nice people. Oh, she's so kind. <laughs> That's one way you can describe it. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a nice way to say what? But, uh, oh, they all he, doesn't, he doesn't believe me. No, actually the best part was going through the archival collection. Because oh, yeah. that was fun. And, you know, yeah, it was, it was really interesting. You learn so much about Nova Scotia while you're at it made you think about what people ate and why they ate what they ate. You right. realize that they ate what they could grow, what they could fish, what they could hunt, and maybe a lemon would arrive on the ship and, and they'd th have a lemon. That's what I found interesting about going through some of the other recipes too, was that you would see a few ingredients starting to show up from different parts of the world, like some, some recipes had curry in them. And there were some, like you could see just a little more influence of yeah. kind of the beginnings of globalization, yeah. which I thought was a really neat aspect yeah. of it as well. Uh, so we just have our egg yolks in there with our spices, right. add the salmon, and I'm just going to chop up these capers. Unless you want to. No, you do. Okay. You're the pro. <laughs> I might have another egg experience and embarrass myself. <laughs> people, people will think I'm a phony. <laughs> no. She know about food anyway. Learned on my mama's knee. <laughs> so was food like? Did you grow up in Nova Scotia? Yeah, in yeah. Amherst, in a Amherst? Lebanese family. Okay. Food, food, food. I grew up in that area as well. I grew up in like uh, Tadwagosh, Pugwash. Oh, that's area. right. We yeah. talked about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we yeah. did. Yes. Mm -hmm. was, we had a conversation a very long time ago. Yes. Months and months and months. 
Um, so was food important growing up? Come here, like I'd imagine a Lebanese family it probably was. Oh yeah. My mother was a fabulous cook, and if she wasn't cooking, she was talking about cooking. And um, when I was a kid, we couldn't get ingredients for Lebanese food yeah. locally. So we would order them from Montreal. So about once a month or so, this big box would arrive and would have this huge bag of pistachio nuts, and it would have zatar and um, wheat and lentils and exotic chickpeas and <laughs> all this stuff that you, you, know, you couldn't buy. Yeah. And then sort of... As times changed, health food became popular, and that kind of stuff was accessible. So we, you know, started to be able to buy some locally. And then there were a couple of Lebanese stores in Halifax. So um, when I moved to Halifax, you know, I'd be every time I went back to Amherst to visit, I'd have a bag of groceries in the back of the car. So, um, so I just added the lemon zest to this. Right. Just very light. Whenever you zest a lemon zest it directly into what you want to use because then you get all the essential oils which is where the flavor is. I knew that. And then we're going to take our lemon and instead of cutting it kind of across the equator like normal uh, we just cut it in thirds and we get way more juice out of it that way. <gasps> I didn't know that. Cool. Well because that way you're not fighting the natural structure of the lemon. You're kind wow. of going with it. Wow. We don't need the whole lemon because we get so much juice out of that I little never piece. ever considered the natural structure of a lemon before. You know these are the things the chefs think about. Wow. And we're going to add about a cup of mashed potato in here. And this is just mashed potato, nothing special about mm -hmm. it. Did you put milk in it when you mashed it? I did, yeah. So yeah. The, I kind of designed this so it would be like a leftover mashed potato that was just right. sitting in your fridge from the night before. Yeah. So milk and butter. Yeah, exactly. Well, heavy, yeah, um, heavy cream and oh, butter. heavy cream. Yeah. Whoa, you don't fool around. No. No, actually, I just realized I forgot to whip heavy heavy cream into the yolks. Ah. We get Sasha from Taste. Just Hi, Sasha. Hi, Sasha. Hey, Sasha. I know Sasha. Yeah, we'll see yeah, we'll and Louisa Gare from the States. Kind. She's like oh. a kindness ambassador, Louisa Gare Hello. from the States. Wow. She's awesome. And Ted's here for Hi, Ted. Ted. Obviously. Um, oh, hi, Dad. <laughs> Sa <laughs> Sasha was on a lot of shoots, so she's eaten a yeah. lot of yes. food from this she book. Is. Yeah. So we have our mixture, it's our salmon, it's our potatoes, uh, and this is kind of what it was in the original recipe. Mm -hmm. It was had flour in it too, which made it a little heavier. Um, and then this is kind of the thing that I contributed to it, other than the spices, All right. was this little bit of white, which kind of elevates it a bit. All right. And just kind of, like, literally lifts it, not makes it better. Yeah. It makes it a little bit lighter. Nice. He's yeah. good. No wonder you guys <laughs> you. hired him here. <laughs> so what, what was the, you told us the your favorite part about the book. What was the most challenging part? Or do you want to say that on live? Well, the actual final editing is when you start really, you're really editing it intensely because there's yeah. so many numbers in cookbooks. It's not like just editing a text, you know, pages and pages of, of words. Yeah. You've got numbers and, and um, um, you know, you've got the metric conversions and just, you have to be really, really careful that you don't make any mistakes. So that was probably the most challenging part. And getting all the details right, make sure everybody's name is right, and that it's consistent. You don't have somebody's name spelled one way on one page and the other way on another page. And, you know, you catch yourself doing stuff like that. Was there a lot of back and forth between, like, the, the systems, like metric and imperial? Or was it all kind of consistent across the board when you got the recipes? When I got the recipes, um, I got a little bit of everything. Yeah, so I had to do um, some conversions. Have I made every recipe? No. I confess I have not made every recipe. Did anybody test every recipe? Mm, the I photographers actually, the too. photographers ate every recipe because every recipe was made for a photo, or almost every recipe, um, um, because they were made by professional chefs, and the chefs made them for the photo shoot, one would assume the recipe works. I've made several of the recipes and tasted several more that other people made, so it's a good book. One of the other recipes I did in the book was a steak and kidney pie. Oh, yes. And when we did the photo shoots, the photographer, I guess, thought it was like an apple pie. And so he, everybody was taking slices, and he took one home. Um, and I guess his wife heated it up for dessert, thinking it was apple pie, and oh. then they bit into it. And I was like, what is wrong with this pie? That's funny. <laughs> okay, so right, we have now. our croquette mix. Yes. And this is 
this is kind of a really cool technique for doing stuff like this. Uh, it's called quenelling, where you take a little bit on a spoon, mm -hmm. and then you just kind of pass it between oh, cool. the two spoons. That is very cool. And then you just get that perfect little shape. Wow. Just gonna try. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to try one. I'm nervous. Do you cook much at home? I cook all the time. Yeah. As does my fella over there. We both cook a lot. What kind of stuff do you cook? Like a lot of Lebanese stuff, or do I you mix it up? Lebanese stuff. I cook pasta. I cook beans. I cook. We like Mexican. We do a lot of uh, tacos. Nice. So the technique here. My technique is not very good. So it's actually coming from the back of the spoon, and then kind of curl. Oh, curl it over. Yeah. So if you hold it like this. Yeah, exactly. So then you scoop under. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. And then you just drop that down there. Look at that. Alright, so because this Not is... Not bad. Yeah, you can do another one. Um, with these, it's best to chill them for a little bit before you bread them because they're really soft. Uh, so these ones, actually they're all soft now. Uh, these ones I made earlier and then froze them, but they're kind of softening up. So I'm going to just crack a few eggs in here. I think I'm getting better at it. Uh, you are getting a lot better the at it. The ones I made at home didn't look like this. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. And he says it sounds like a perfect Christmas present. It does, the book, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So where, where can you buy this? The book will be everywhere. It's published so locally by Nimbus, so it'll be at Bookmark. Our local bookstore on, Quinn, on um, Spring Garden Road. It'll be at all the chapters and everywhere you buy a book, it'll be there. Digital too, like in Kindle and Amazon. I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 So actually, let's talk about the launch tomorrow. So oh, you're going to be there? I am going to be there. It's going to be wonderful. <laughs> Ben's going to be there. This is going to be... Is that what I was supposed to say? Yes. This is what you're supposed to say. There's going to be three chefs in total, right? Yes. Ingrid Dunsworth, the cake lady, is going to be there with pumpkin pie. Oh. R rumor has it. And then me, and then who's the and other chef? And Chris Valden. Oh, okay. Perfect. And uh, Chris did some seafood recipes recipes for the book and he did um i think he's doing a lobster risotto tomorrow oh nice yeah, yeah so we're gonna have some samples of uh, a couple of the recipes from the book which will be really cool mm -hmm. and you can buy the book there as well and get some autographs if you want from, from famous some people? of the chefs you know like some guys covered in egg wash or whatever you know what do you think your autograph is worth <laughs> mine uh someone's asked to see the cover here what do I think it's worth, or what do I think people would pay for? <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> there, the peanut gallery has declared it priceless. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is just a standard breading procedure, which is flour, egg, and then breadcrumbs. The flour makes the egg stick to what you're breading, and then the egg makes the breading stick. And this is how you bread pretty much anything. And these guys, like I, we, I made these today, and I tried one for the first time since I like kind of wrote the recipe and did the photo shoot. And I was really, I hate to say, but I was kind of surprised at how good they were. <laughs> <laughs> He's so modest. So honest. Modest and honest. No, they're fabulous. Okay, so I'm gonna wash this off my hands. When you uh, when you bread stuff, don't do what Ben just did. Try and keep one hand for wet stuff and one hand for dry stuff, and then this won't idea. happen to you. You're full of you're full of good ideas. <laughs> I just don't follow. I think I cook better earlier in the day. <laughs> they have to make an excuse for that egg. So you're gonna be at the launch tomorrow. I've been told I'm making a speech. Oh, watch out, world. Perfect. And then yeah, I found you, that out today. And then you're doing a signing on Sunday? I'm supposed to be doing a signing on Sunday at Chapters in um, Bears Lake. Oh, okay. And the following Sunday at um, 
Sunnyside Mall and then at McNack Mall. You're busy. Yeah. I bought a new pen. Sorry? <laughs> I bought a new pen. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I hope you bought some extra ink with it. <laughs> so what's next for you after this? Take a break and then move on to the next project? Uh, I have a bunch of little projects on the go. I'm always doing stuff. I, I do some film research for local filmmakers and documentaries. Oh, okay. And I, um, I edit for people, so I get hired to do editing and different writing contracts here and there. And I'm talking to myself now. He's gone. That's all right. We can all hear you. You're not talking to Ask yourself. me a question and walks away. I can still hear you. I just have to wash my hands. Good. It's true what they say about well, chefs. You've mastered the canal up there. <laughs> Oh. I just have to multitask. I'm getting a manicure tomorrow because of all my signings coming up for the second time in my life. But had I known I was going to be live today, I would have had it done sooner. <laughs> okay, so when you deep fry things, uh, we could have done these in our deep fryer, but I thought it would be kind of neat to show how you could do this at home. So I just have a cast iron skillet. You can use any kind of pan or a shallow pot. Just put enough oil in to cover it. Turn it on about medium and then let it heat up. If you want to see if the oil's ready, take a little piece of bread, drop it in the oil. If it browns within like 30 seconds, you're good to go. Uh, and then just place what you're deep frying in. Don't drop it in. If you drop it, it's going to splash. You're going to burn yourself. Just gently place it in. Oil less likely to burn yourself. A lot safer. And they're mm. only going to take like two minutes. Mm. My plate and they kind of defrosted, so they went a little wonky, but that's okay. Yeah, and she's popped in. Hi, Debbie. Hey, Debbie. This is fun. There must be millions of people watching. <laughs> it goes up right now for 15. 15? Yeah, There's 15 up. people watching. Yes. Wow. Awesome. And then Renee is giving you the gears. And you're very rude for being here. Mid-question. Oh. <laughs> Ben's lost some points. Oh, Try the multitask. <laughs> oh, there's always an excuse, Benjamin. <laughs> I could make a crack about men and multitasking, but that would be so rude. You're not rude tonight. You're. It is okay if you want to be rude. That is fine. Last. Oh, I, we've had a few episodes where <laughs> where people were rude. Not rude per se, but uh, they weren't very nice to you. No, uh, I get picked on a lot. It's hard being me, you know? I get picked on a lot. It's part of being famous. I don't know if I would describe myself as famous. So this is just mayonnaise that I'm adding uh, grainy mustard to, and I, it just balances the flavor of the salmon out really nicely, I think. Yum. And then there's a really cool technique here. I hope you can see it, where we're just gonna put a drop on the plate, and we're gonna take the back of the spoon, plop it in the middle, and then just run it down. Oh, nice. Nice. Beautiful. Next dinner at my house, <laughs> everything's going to be like that. <laughs> Peanut butter in the morning. Yeah, you know, for about 10 years, everything in every <laughs> restaurant was like that. Remember when everything was stacked? I, like as high? No, higher I'm, than that. I'm, now talking, I'm doing all know, the cliches here. Stacked like, you know, a foot high. So I'm actually going to steal this board from you for a second. Okay, so I'm not I even using it. Cut these green onions. So we have our croquettes, our little... These are starting Dijon. to run into each other, but... That's okay. C'est la vie. Uh-oh, that one was nicer before it left <laughs> the plate. So we'll put a little bit of green onion over here, one and then more. we're going to grate a little bit more lemon zest. If I don't scrape this... Yummy. Full clean. The spirit of my mama will get me. <laughs> get every last morsel. Oh, right. she didn't waste a thing. Yeah. Not a thing. Were they first generation? I'm first generation. You're first they generation. Came over from Lebanon. My dad came in 1926. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and he went back in 1948 to get married and brought my mom over. So, yeah. Wow. So, 
It's quite a lot of excitement in the old town, I was told, the day that she arrived. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little town. <laughs> Adam, can you pass me a couple forks, please? There. Oh, well done. Look at that. Not bad for an amateur. I think, no, you did a wonderful you did an job. Excellent job. Uh, Thank you. You're just saying it because it's true. <laughs> and Debbie Adams said she learned some. She already cut the lemon the way that you taught. Awesome. Cool. I got way more juice. Yeah, it's true. It works. All right, dig wow. in. I want to see if mine compare to yours. Ooh, the truth is. I'm going to take a picture first. It collapsed. Actually. It collapsed already. Is that the only one? Yeah, take a picture. Oh, they're quite hot. Mm. Oh, they're quite hot. Mm. <laughs> oh, my God, they're good. Nice and crunchy and like soft crunchy, on the inside, but that mm. smoke, yeah. Crunchy on the outside, soft in the middle, and just full of flavor. It's absolutely delicious. Mm -hmm. mm. Maybe they should make our, their way onto our menu. Maybe I'll just, <laughs> maybe, I'll just maybe I'll just leave now. These are great. <laughs> okay, so Valerie, there is. I was, just, I was just kidding. No, you can take it. They're all yours. <laughs> so that's pretty much the show. Thank you so much for coming. Um, everybody, the book is Nova Scotia Cookery Then and Now. Launches tomorrow at the archives. You're all invited. It is open to the public. Yeah. Open to the public. It's open to the public. You can get this uh, as of tomorrow or starting next week. Um, only a small number of books have actually arrived, which I suspect will sell out at the launch. And so I would, if I were to go to a bookstore and look for it, I'd wait till Monday. Okay, so wait till Monday, go check it out. Great Christmas present. Um, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Uh, Ben's the best. <laughs> there is there is one more thing we need from you, though. We always end the show. Black box next week. Look no. Oh, right. So I have to plug something first, and then we'll get to that. <laughs> So, so next week we have our. <laughs> oh, it's not that bad. Next week we have our black box competition between Chef Mark and I. Um, it's our big food raiser for Feed Nova Scotia. All right. It'll be right here Wednesday night live. It's gonna be a really special edition of Chit Chat Shop. Super excited. So tune in. Okay. I so, will tune in too. Thank you very much. So the last thing we do on every episode is myself uh -oh. and our esteemed guest have to say chit chat chop five times as fast as we can so this is episode 11 and we have completed it three times wow in a row, five times. In a row. so are you ready he'll count us <coughs> in it goes three two one go okay okay, okay. you ready Three, two, one. Chit chat chop, chit chat chop, chit chat chop, chit chat chop, chit chat chop. Wow! I love it.